Hello everyone, welcome back. So today's problem is BYU14 from Pathfinder Impulse and Momentum chapter. This question is a nice problem for implementing the center of mass frame. Okay, so let's start with the problem statement. So we have a block of mass capital M that can slide without friction on a horizontal floor. A small ball of mass small m is suspended by a light inextensible cord of length L from a hanger fixed at the top of the vertical pole. And the ball can swing freely in a vertical plane. The ball is released from a horizontal position as shown, so we have to find the maximum tensile force in the string during the subsequent motion. So give this problem a good try guys and then and then you can check out the solution. Okay guys, so this is how the situation is looking like and this represents the initial situation, this represents the final situation. So initially both the masses were at rest and finally what will happen is if I assume some intermediary position of the ball, something like this, we can clearly see a tension that is pulling on the structure which means the structure will accelerate towards the right. So, so in the final situation the block is going to have some velocity. Let's call that velocity as V1. Now guys for the ball what I'm going to do is imagine a guy that is you know sitting over here and observing the motion. Now with respect to this guy who's in the block's frame of reference the ball will, sim will simply appear to move along a circle. So let's say with respect to this guy, the ball has a velocity of V2. So V2 is the relative velocity of the ball with respect to the block's frame, okay? So with respect to ground frame, uh, obviously we'll have to add the velocity of V1 vectorially to it. From the ground frame, it'll appear as if the ball has a velocity of V2 minus V1 towards the left, okay? Okay, so now let's talk about what's happening at some intermediate time. Now clearly the string is pulling on this rod with some tension force T and let's say the angle it makes with the vertical is theta. So the acceleration of the capital M mass or these block we can easily write it as the horizontal force which is T sine theta divided by the mass of the object which is capital M. Uh, we are taking the frame of reference as the platform. Now this guy is sitting in a non-inertial frame of reference, right? It, it is being accelerated to the right with acceleration of AM. If, if this guy wants to write F equal to MA, then he has to apply a pseudo force on all the masses present here. So let's apply the pseudo force. So the, the magnitude of the pseudo force is going to be T sine theta times small m by capital M. Okay, now, with, now we can easily write F equal to MA. So with respect to this guy, this ball will perform circular motion now. Okay guys, so we have to talk about the max tension now. Okay guys, so now let's write F equal to MA along the string. So along the string, the forces are tension T. And then we have the component of T sine theta, that is T sine theta small m by capital M times sine theta. Then we also have the component of mg, which in this case is going to be mg cos theta. So this would be so this would be equal to m v square by L. Now and here keep in mind, guys, v is the velocity according to this guy. So v is the relative velocity. Okay, it's not the absolute velocity because we are writing it with respect to the blocks frame, right? So now if you rearrange the terms guys, T comes out to be this expression over here. Now this expression is pretty interesting. So if you observe something, if you put theta equal to zero here, so mg cos theta will attain maximum, right? And this denominator would become minimum because this term just vanishes, right? And, and also we know that by common sense that V would be maximum when it is at the bottommost position. So when theta is zero, we can see that the numerator is maximum and the denominator is minimum. So clearly tension is maximum at the bottommost position theta equal to zero, I get T max as mg plus mg plus mv squared by L. Okay, so now if I figure out V, which is the relative velocity at the bottommost point, by the way, at the bottommost point, then my question is done. Because if you observe something, we don't really care about this V1. We only want this V2, which is a relative velocity. And this is where the CM frame is going to help us. Let's just discuss what that is. Okay guys, so let's just take this V2 as V because that's what we took the variable above. Okay, so now we have to apply work energy theorem. And work energy theorem, we are not going to be applying with respect to this guy. And the reason for that is the work due to zero force will be annoying, right? Because if you guys look at this pseudo force, it's some sine theta component. The work, the force itself is a variable force. So the work done by it is going to be annoying. So we are going to use the ground frame to conserve energy. The, uh, the problem with the ground frame is that V1 is going to come in. and and if you want to eliminate V1, you have to use momentum conservation. But we are going to use something inter very interesting here. If you observe something, guys, initially the momentum is zero, right? And we know that there is no external forces in the horizontal direction. So final momentum also should be zero because finally we can easily see that there is no vertical velocities, right? There is only horizontal velocities. So final momentum must also be zero. And also, uh, one more important thing, as there is no net force in the x direction, the acceleration of the center of mass of the system would be zero, which means 
the CM won't move in the X direction, which means the velocity of the center of mass will also be zero throughout the duration of the motion. So basically the center of mass will remain at the same position. So we can take the help of the center of mass frame here. The kinetic energy of the system guys, because we need the kinetic energy of the system for the work energy theorem, right? For writing the kinetic energy, we're going to use the result of the center of mass frame. So if we have two particles guys, M1 and M2, who have respective velocities V1 and V2, then we can try. So the kinetic energy of the system is going to be half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared. But I can also write it in a different way. And that is half the total mass of the system times the velocity of the center of mass squared. That is half m vcm squared plus half mu times v relative squared. Okay, and this is the formula that we're going to be using. So, so this term is assuming the center of mass to be one single particle moving with vcm. And this term, half mu v rel squared, is basically the velocity of the system relative to the CM frame, okay? So this is, so these two terms, you can kind of say that this is velocity of the center of mass. Sorry, not velocity, it will be kinetic energy of the center of mass. And this is kinetic energy of the system relative to the center of mass, okay? Mu is actually m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2. And v rel is the, is a relative velocity between the particles. It's not v1 minus vcm. It's actually V1 minus V2. This is very useful here, guys, because according to our analysis here, VCM is zero. So you have to be careful here because if the condition was at some intermediary angle theta, then center of mass will have some vertical velocity, right? As you can clearly see. But just because we are in the final situation, but in the final situation, luckily the center of mass does not have any vertical velocity. So we can, in the final situation, we can say that the velocity of the center of mass in the y direction is zero. And the velocity of the center of mass in the x direction is anyway zero. And therefore the net speed, net velocity of the center of mass is zero. And hence we can say that this term would be zero. So now talking about the half mu v rel squared, this is what is making the question so much more easier. Because if you look at it, bottommost point, if you observe the relative velocity is simply v. The v1 simply cancels out, right? The relative velocity of this ball with respect to this frame is simply v. The kinetic energy of the system, I can simply write it as half small m capital M upon capital M plus small m times v squared. And if you want to do it in the ground frame, then also you can do it. All you have to do is write one more momentum conservation equation. But with this analysis, we can do it with just one equation. Now the gain in kinetic energy is due to the decrease in potential energy. Decrease in potential energy is going to be simply mgl, right? This we are going to equate it to mgl. And t max is simply going to be mg plus mv squared by l that is equal to mg plus mv squared divided by l is as you can see it is 2 mg capital M plus small m divided by capital M 1 plus 2 so that would be 3 2 small m divided by capital M so this is the answer for the maximum tension so that's it for this video guys if you enjoyed the video please do like share and subscribe and that's it thanks for watching